Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about the OSPF metric, which is the cost. As OSPF is a link state routing protocol, the router will learn about all the destinations in its area, the links to get there, and their cost. The router will select routes based on the lowest cost to get to the destination, and that's the route that will make it into the routing table. So having a look at an example of an OSPF metric calculation, R2 over on the left has got two possible paths it could take to get to the 10.0.1.0 slash 24 network behind R1. It could either go over the single link directly to R1 or it could go via R3. If it goes over directly the link to R1, the cost there would be 50, the cost to R1, plus 10, the cost of the link itself, so that cost would be 60. To go along the bottom path via R3, the cost would be 10 plus 10 plus 10, so the cost there would be 30. So the bottom path has got a lower cost. So even though it's a longer hop count, it's a lower cost because it's better quality links are gonna have higher bandwidth. So it's gonna to prefer to take the lower path. Next thing to talk about is the reference bandwidth. The cost for OSPF is automatically derived from the interface bandwidth. So a higher bandwidth interface will be automatically preferred. The way that the cost is calculated is it's the reference bandwidth divided by the actual interface bandwidth. And the default reference bandwidth is 100 megabits per second. So what this means is if you've got a fast ethernet link, that would default to a cost of one. Because fast ethernet, the default bandwidth on there is 100 for 100 megabits per second. We divide 100 by 100, that gives us a cost of one. On a serial interface, like a T1 in that example here, the bandwidth there is 1.544 megabits per second. So that will default to a cost of 64 because 100 divided by 1.544 is 64. So you can see that the higher bandwidth interface is gonna be automatically preferred. But there's a problem here because OSPF will treat all interfaces of 100 megabits per second or faster as equal. The best possible cost is one. We don't have like a 0 0.1 cost. So fast ethernet, gigabit ethernet, and 10 gigabit ethernet, etc. 40 gigabit ethernet, 100 gigabit ethernet, they will all default to a cost of one. And this can cause undesirable routing in modern networks with modern high speed ethernet interfaces. You see the example in the diagram here. The link directly between R1 and R2 on the top path is fast ethernet. So with the default reference bandwidth of 100, it gets a cost of one. But on the bottom path going via R3, they're gigabit ethernet interfaces. So they're faster, they've got higher bandwidth. But because we've got the default reference bandwidth of 100, they get a cost of one each as well. So the top path will have a default cost of two, which is the cost from R2 to R1 plus the cost of the link itself. And then along the bottom path, it's gonna have a cost of three. So the bottom, the bottom path is not gonna be preferred. The router is gonna use the top path, which is fast ethernet, even though then it's slower than the bottom path, which is gigabit ethernet. So really we would prefer the traffic to go along the bottom path. So the way that we can force this is by changing the reference bandwidth. The reason that the default reference bandwidth is 100, by the way, 
is that OSPF has been around for a long time. And when OSPF first came out, we were back on Ethernet networks, like old style classical Ethernet of 10 megabits per second. And at the time, network engineers thought, well, maybe sometime in the future, we'll have 100 megabits per second. Well, but that's way off, we'll never get faster than that. Obviously, times have moved on and we do have much faster Ethernet interfaces than fast Ethernet 100 megabits per second now. We've got gigabit Ethernet, we've got 10 gigabit Ethernet, and we've even got 40 gigabit and 100 gigabit Ethernet now. But using the old default reference bandwidth, they'll all be treated the same equal cost by OSPF. So we want to set the reference bandwidth to a higher value. The way you do that is a global config router OSPF. SPF, and then under there, the command is auto cost reference bandwidth and what you want to set the reference bandwidth to. So if you set it to 1000, for example, that would mean that gigabit Ethernet interfaces had a cost of one, fast Ethernet would get a cost of 10. But you want to think a bit further ahead in the future. If on your current production network, your fastest interfaces right now are gigabit Ethernet, don't set a reference bandwidth of 1000 because maybe in a year or two's time, you're going to have 10 gigabit, 40 gigabit Ethernet and 100 gigabit Ethernet. So set it to a high value that you're not going to have to change it again in future. And when you set the reference bandwidth, you need to do it the same on all routers so they're all using a consistent metric. So the example here, I've said all cost reference bandwidth 100,000, which is 100 gigabit Ethernet. So now for our example, the fast Ethernet interface along the top path will get a cost of 1000. The gigabit Ethernet interfaces along the bottom path get a cost of 100. So it will now prefer the bottom path because we changed the reference bandwidth. So in real world networks, typically, all you'll have to do is just change the reference bandwidth and then OSPF is going to automatically select the highest bandwidth paths, which is what you would normally prefer. However, you might want to manipulate this. For example, say you've got a high latency satellite link, which is higher bandwidth, but you want to prefer a lower bandwidth interface. You can do that by manipulating the OSPF metric. Another reason would be just if you want to spread the load of your traffic across different paths in your network. So OSPF takes the bandwidth of an interface into account when calculating the metric, so paths along higher bandwidth links will be preferred. The most desirable path will typically be automatically selected, like I just said. But if you want to use a different path, you can manipulate that by manually changing the bandwidth or the OSPF cost on interfaces. It's recommended to use cost because the bandwidth setting can affect many features other than OSPF, such as QoS. With OSPF, we manipulate the cost rather than the bandwidth, but both would have the same effect. So if we are going to manipulate the bandwidth, you see in the example here on R1, I've said show interface serial one slash zero, and I can see there that the bandwidth is 1544 kilobits per second, which is the default bandwidth on a serial interface. If I wanted to change this, in global config, I can go to interface serial one slash zero and then say bandwidth seven, six, eight. Again, at the physical level, the link is still going to run at the clock rate. So if the clock rate is 1544, it's still going to run at 1544. Setting the bandwidth does not change the actual physical speed of the interface. It just changes how iOS will look at that interface for software policy. So this is how we could manipulate the overall cost for that link by changing the bandwidth. But the better way of doing it is by directly changing the cost because that won't affect other software policy like QoS. So to do that, we can say interface fast ethernet zero slash zero, IP OSPF cost 50, we'll change the cost on that link. And to verify what the cost on the link is, we can do a show IP OSPF interface. If you've got a lot of interfaces on the router and you just say show IP OSPF interface and hit enter, you're going to get quite long output. So you can also specify the individual interface here. You'll just get information about that one interface. We can also do a show IP OSPF interface brief to get it in a short output to see the cost on all of our interfaces.
Okay, so that's all the information about the OSPF metric. Next lecture, we'll take a look at actually configuring it in the lab. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.